Hey guys, this is Ken Brown from KenWBrown.com. Today's video is following up on a recent blog post that I published called Three Reasons Why You Should Play Bingo in Your Training Course. In this post, I talked about bingo as a tool that I use in the classroom that I've been using over the last seven years. And I go through some of the specifics of, of what I do and, and how it works and gave you guys a couple of links to some free templates to use to set up your own bingo sheet. And I wanted to take the time in this video to really dive a little deeper and show you exactly what I do to kind of get my sheets, my bingo sheets set up and walk you through some of the specifics of what you'll need to do to be able to get the most value out of bingo as a tool and an activity within your classroom. All right, so this is the keynote version of the blank bingo template that I provided in the blog post. And if you were to open this in keynote, all you would do is simply double click in the squares and you'd be able to enter your text into each of the squares. What you're going to enter into each square, we're gonna talk about in just a minute. But before we do that, let me show you an example of one of my bingo sheets that I've used over the last seven years. And I've used this in, in my facilitating engagement workshop, basically a train the trainer, where I really walk participants through what I think is a unique approach to really the why and the how of uh, thinking a little differently about how they teach and integrating some techniques and concepts that they really haven't thought about before. So this sheet is an example of a lot of the concepts and principles that we do talk about. And for me, it's this represents really the most important things that I want them to leave my course remembering. Okay. And as I've done this over the years, I've discovered that if you create different versions of the bingo sheet, uh, it kind of randomizes and, and makes a little bit more variable um, who gets bingo when. So I've created a version 2, a version 3, 4, and 5. And for the most part, they've got most of the same takeaways. There are some that may be unique to, to a couple of the versions and some that are you know consistent across all of them. But I find this really helpful when you're distributing them, especially, let's say, if you've got, you know, a uh, table set up and you've got four or five people at a table, you can give each person at the table a different version, guaranteeing that you won't get five people screaming bingo at the same time. OK, so you want to kind of mix it up a bit. So how do you use bingo? Well, big part of what you're going to have to work on is your prep work. Uh, before you get into the classroom. And what you've got to figure out is, okay, on that bingo sheet, I've got 24 blank spaces. What am I going to put in there? What are my key takeaways, the concepts and principles that I really want to focus on and have my participants really remember? That's the first part. So you figure that, that piece out. Now, it can be a high level or it can be something that's a little more specific. So for example, you know, in my workshop, I talk about learning styles and I typically just break it down. I keep it pretty simple and break it down into a visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. So a bullet point could be learning styles and a bullet point could be either one of these three. It could be visual, auditory, or kinesthetic learning. Okay, it's up to you depending on the length of your course and, and how much content you have to play with to identify those takeaways. Again, I recommended creating, you know, good five versions of the bingo sheet just so you have some variability there. And as they're playing the game, just decide if you want to, you know, get creative and provide them any kind of bingo markers, you know, little chips or whatever that they can use to cover up their squares, or do you want to have them just kind of mark it or indicate it uh, in their own way? When I've been a participant and I've been I've participated in this activity, I've had smaller sheets. My templates are eight and a half by eleven. I just like a nice larger size, and I've I've actually discovered that at that size, my participants will often take notes right on the bingo sheet, which I think is pretty cool, and that will actually 
play to their benefit later when we talk about you know how this plays out in the classroom. So that's basically the prep work. Once you're in the class, first thing you need to do is just hand out the bingo sheets. And what I would recommend is, you know, after you've done kind of your, your initial introductions and you've gone through the course agenda, really kind of talking about your plan for the day or for the course, that's when you want to hand out the bingo sheets and say, okay, and by the way, we're also going to be playing bingo. So again, you know, you're going to hand out version one to the first person, the next person in the line or at the table or however your course, your classroom is arranged, gets the next version, version three, version four, version five, and you start back over. Okay. That's the way you distribute it pretty evenly across the room. Okay. Then you want to kind of go through the basic instructions and they're not that difficult, really. Uh, you tell them that, you know, on this sheet or concepts, principles, topics that, I'm, that you're going to be covering over the course of the training. As you talk about that, they're supposed to mark it on their sheet. When they get enough to have a bingo, easy enough, they shout out bingo. And then it's their role, their responsibility to then stand, read off each of their marked items, and then go back and state one thing that they remember about each of those items. And you can vary this. You can have them read through them and then go back, or you can have them take it one at a time and describe it and then go to the next marked item and then describe what they remember and do that. So it's really variability, you know, it's up to you, however you want to do that. But that's their commitment, that they understand that by calling out bingo, they're going to have to stand up. They just can't say, oh, I got these four things. They got to talk about each one of those. That creates a radically different mindset for the participants. And I'm speaking from experience, having been a participant in this situation, you start thinking about these topics a lot, especially as you get closer and closer to bingo. You may start to freak. You're rehearsing what you're going to say. But if you think about it, it's huge. How many opportunities do you get in a classroom where you actually get your students, your participants, thinking and rehearsing the content? That's one of the beautifully powerful things that this very simple tool does. All right, for you, your role during bingo. You're there. If somebody calls bingo, you know, you've been going through your content, somebody shouts bingo, you press pause, they get the floor, okay? They stand up, they start talking. You need to provide feedback. You need to provide correction as it's needed. So maybe they misstate something or the terminology was different from what you had said earlier or they just got something wrong. Whatever it is, you need to correct if there's anything that needs correcting. Otherwise, just give them praise, give them kudos after they've completed reading through their list, and then give them a round of applause. Get everybody to clap because this is a big deal to stand up and kind of do something like this, especially for an introvert like myself. This is a big deal to kind of do this in front of everybody. You're kind of hanging, hanging yourself out on the line there. And whenever they do that, give them a prize. Have something ready to go, whether that be some type of branded tchotchkes, whatever you have, candy, chocolate, whatever it may be. It doesn't have, have to be anything huge, um, but just something to say, thank you for your effort. Here you go. So what you'll find and what I've discovered that as you do this, and I, my workshop is, is usually a day, so what I've discovered is up until lunchtime, I may get two or three bingos, but then in the afternoon, I start to get more and more. As we start covering more topics and more things start getting filled and marked on the bingo sheets. So you need to be prepared for that to know that you're going to be having more pauses throughout the afternoon. Okay. You may run into situations where people aren't participating and maybe as you're walking around the room and you kind of look at their sheet, you realize, wow, you know, Bob's got four bingos. Why hasn't he called any out? So you can hand that, handle that in a couple ways. You can talk to them individually, 
you know, maybe during break or something like that, or just as a group, just really approach them and say, hey, guys, you know, this is really important. There's a purpose behind this. And again, what you'll find out for me is anything I do in class, there's always a purpose. It's never just because it's fun and that's it. Yeah, it's going to be fun, but there's always going to be some type of learning purpose driving it. Okay. So encourage them, you know, or encourage them as a group to participate. And if need be, if you need to pull out the big guns, maybe, you know, initially you were just given chocolate, then maybe you got something better in store that you can hand out for people to participate. That'll help them participate. So keep that in mind as you do this. So remember why you are playing bingo. What's the whole point of this? Um, one of the things that I talk about when I talk about engagement and engaging your audience, and one of the things that I, I really stress in my workshop is you talking less, allowing your participants to talk more. This tool, this activity is a great opportunity for you to hush and them to talk. Okay, so it's important. Every time you hear a bingo and somebody stands up, they're going back over the same content you've covered, okay? But the important thing is, it's not you, it's them. You can stand up there all day and take a bingo sheet and go through every one of those takeaways and say, hey, remember when we talked about this and I talked about that and we discussed this. It's not going to compare to having them individually standing up and for that 30, 60 seconds after they've called bingo, they've got the attention of the class and they're, in all essence, they are serving as the facilitator for that time. And they're revisiting the same takeaways, the same concepts and principles you've already discussed. It's powerful. And you may not believe me, but when you see it in action, you'll be convinced. You'll be like, wow. So, that's it. It's pretty straightforward. You've got your templates. Set up five versions of that. Get your takeaways ready. Um, populate your sheets. Hand them out. Monitor it. Encourage people to participate. Be prepared to pause and let them take the floor for the 30, 60 seconds that they need. Praise them. Applaud them and you'll have a tremendously better, more engaged audience as a result. I want to hear from you. Try this. Try playing bingo. Send me an email, ken at kenwbrown.com. Let me know how it went. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to put it on the blog and just let people know this is a pretty awesome tool. Thanks.